celebrating the Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus is the mercy of God. The Eucharist and the Word of God is given to us the mercy of God, the person of God. Let us experience the mercy of God in Jesus. That's what we are doing in this celebration. By listening the word of God and receiving Jesus, the great mercy, we are filled with that mercy and we are also supposed to give that mercy to others. Let us become the mercy of God and pray for the grace to experience that mercy in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our failures and sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you once were dead, but now you live forever and ever. Lord, have mercy. Mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, baby. 
from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, for the love of God is this, that we obey His commandments, and for whatever is born of God conquers the world. For this, His commandments are not burdensome. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Celebrating the Divine Mercy Sunday. What do we mean by 
divine mercy. What is the mercy of God? In today's Mass, in the beginning itself, I said, Jesus is the mercy revealed to us. The word of God, that is Jesus, is the mercy revealed to us. Jesus is the mercy of God. So St. Thomas Aquinas, Peter uh, uh, St. John Paul II, explains the mercy of God in this way. Divine mercy is God's love reaching down to meet the needs and overcome the miseries of his creatures. This we can see in every part of the Holy Bible, especially in the New Testament, in Gospels, and we can experience this mercy there in the Bible. So today's Gospel reading, it is an explanation of the mercy of God. The Gospel reading explains or introduces us to a group of fearful disciples. It is the evening of the first day of the week, the Easter Sunday. But the disciples are locked away in fear. We know that why they were locked in, because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Because they also afraid that they would be caught and be crucified just like, or punished, just like, uh, or killed, just like the, their master was killed. And also they were disturbed because they, they had abandoned their master in his need. They didn't follow Jesus at the time of the cruel suffering and death. But now, we see, the risen Lord comes to his fearful disciples. The evangelists simply state that this way, he stood among us. He stood among us. He stood among them. It's a plain He stood among them. The Lord stood in all the strength and self-assurance of his risen life. This was a life that no one could take from him. The risen Lord is among them. In standing among them, the Lord led them from fearfulness to boldness, from weakness to strength. He enabled them to be out of their self-imposed prison and to go forth and go forth as his messengers of Easter good news. From being full of fear, they were now filled with joy and courage. We may be able to identify rather easily with the group of this fear disciples which we see in today's gospel. Fear of others can prevent us from witnessing to our faith. The culture in which we live encourages us to think of our faith as something very private, to be given expression <coughs> to be given expression to only behind the closed doors of our churches. Yes, it is evident. Oh, we can speak about Jesus outside. How many of us speak of Jesus in our thoughts? Is it 
the matter of uh, subject or is it a subject matter of our personal thoughts? There can be an uh, intolerance of any public expression of faith. In this situation, we can be fearful about giving public witness to our faith in the Lord. We may be committed to the values of the Lord's gospel, but we can be tempted to hide that commitment from others, fearing ridicule or rejection if we declare where we really stand. In many ways, we can be very like the disciples. We are afraid to express or witness our faith publicly. That's the situation. We need the risen Lord to stand among us as much as the first disciples did. And we can be assured that he does stand among us. He breathes the Holy Spirit on us as he did on the disciples. We need the power of the Spirit. We need the grace of the Spirit. We have to be filled with the Spirit. So we are preparing for the Pentecost which comes 50 days after the Easter celebration. The seven weeks of Easter season, which we are beginning in this time, to draw strength from the risen Lord who stand among us. It is the time to experience that Jesus is with us. It is a time when we might pray the prayer Breathe on me, breathe of breath of God, fill me with life in you. This risen Lord stands among us to give us renewed courage to witness to our faith in the places where we live and work. In the beginning, uh, when resurrected Jesus appeared to the disciples, they did not believe in him. They were frightened, seeing him as a ghost. So we may also recognize something of ourselves in doubting, just like Thomas, who was very much reluctant to accept the resurrection of Jesus in the beginning. He had not been with the other disciples when the risen Lord appeared to them. That's the reason. He had moved away from the community of the disciples. There, are many, there may be times in our lives when, like Thomas, we do not particularly want to be in the company of other disciples. We, we don't like to be in the, in the community. See the pews, a lot of empty spaces. How it was in the after uh, Easter Sunday? It was full. There are days. I am not complaining to you. You are here. It's good. But what happened to others? So just like Thomas, they are away from the community. And they are spreading many other things. They are hearing so many things from here and there. Only when they are in the community, they can receive this. That means only by listening the word of God. Yes, from Google, from the different uh, ways of communication, and get some news, some things about but real teaching should happen in the community and also real presence can experience in the Holy Eucharist when we are together, there Jesus is present. 
To understand the truth of our faith, we should be always in the community of believers united with the church. We have to participate in the celebration of the Eucharist and other sacraments regularly. We have to up update our knowledge of God by understanding the word of God. We must be united with the Mother Church. Separate from the church, away from the community, away from the parish community, we may not be able to understand what the beauty of the presence of God and what is the joy of the community of the community of persons, community of God. So when the other disciples declared to Thomas uh, or Thomas, we have seen the Lord, Thomas became very adamant. He said, unless I see the marks of the wounds, unless I put my hand in it, I will not believe. It's a good sign. Sometimes. We know that Jesus uh, respected Thomas for us. When he appeared against, uh, again uh, to the disciples, this time with Thomas, when Thomas was present, he accommodated himself to Thomas' request. And there was no rebuke, only an invitation to believe. In response to the Lord's invitation, Thomas made the one of the greatest confession of faith in the gospel. My Lord, my God. He experienced the, the power of the presence of Jesus in his life. It is often the case that those who have drifted from the community of believers go on to become people of deep faith who show others the way. So sometimes it can happen. So whenever we go away, think that God is following us. God is with us. The story of Thomas shows us that skepticism and doubt are not necessarily the enemies of faith. It is being true to ourselves, including our doubts, that we find Lord, or rather, that the Lord finds us. Thomas did not travel to Easter faith at the same pace as the other disciples. The Lord respected that. The Lord is always ready to meet us where we are. Thomas belatedly joined to the group who saw the belief. That means he was not in the first place. He was there. He, Jesus came and showed his uh, hands. We who gathered here belong to a different group. We are among those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus said to his disciples, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This Lord declares us, we are blessed. Here is the beatitude that embraces us all. We are, the, we are blessed. Yes, we are blessed to see and experience the very Eucharist with Jesus in the very Eucharistic celebration. In the very Eucharistic celebration, we are seeing and we are experiencing Jesus with us. We are blessed to have gospel, the New Testament, to know more and more about Jesus, the person. We are blessed to be in a believing community to understand the presence of Jesus. What are things we need? Are we ready to believe in Jesus? Are we believing in the, in the presence of Jesus in us? Yes, we need to have the experience of 
this presence in the community. So that's why I'm always welcoming the people to the church. What happens usually after Holy Communion and after the confirmation? What are they? As the usual people. How can we know this Jesus? So if you want to uh, play in a hockey team, you have to continue regularly practicing it. If you want to be in that team, you should play every, every time. The same way, you have to be in, in deep faith, you have to, if you want to grow in faith, yes, you have to be in the community, listening to the word of God, learning together, experience the, the togetherness. That's why I always ask to bring your children to the church. In the beginning of the Mass, I, have, I, I was happy to see one mother, she's showing the, 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 the screen and saying the child to pray. Look at that and pray. And every people who are keeping their mouth closed, I'm asking you to pray, pray. Together, sing with this choir. And pray with the community. Then it will not be a bored business to, to be in the, in the celebration. You will also enjoy, you will also enjoy being together in this few minutes. I know that it takes a little more time, yeah? It's uh, almost uh, 12 minutes, don't worry. If you are experienced, if you are filled with the Spirit, it is for the glory of God. So let us be proclaimed like the disciples. I have seen God, after every Eucharistic celebration, proclaim and say that I have seen the Lord. Oh Lord, you are my God and you are my God, Lord. Are we ready? Then there is no need of any other preachers here. We people can proclaim the Lord in our workplace, in our place where we are going and moving. That is the great witness we can do in our lives. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the heart of Easter rejoicing, we are reminded that faith is at times fragile. Living in the early church was a challenge, just as it is now. Called to be what we cannot see. Let us pray for true abiding faith. Eyes open to God's presence around us. And for all who seek or need the presence of Christ. The response to each intention is, Hear us, Father of mercy. Hear us, Father of mercy. For the universal church, in our efforts to be a faith-filled, 
rejoicing people, and for the grace to be of one mind and one heart in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For government leaders who will lead by example and call their citizens to live justice and peace, so no needy exist in our global community. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For all who are in need, particularly those who suffer violence, are recovering from natural disasters, or lack resources for daily living, and for women who often experience discrimination, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For people who do not know Christ, for those whose faith has been shaken by life's circumstances, for those who doubt their capacity to believe, for those who have never experienced God's great mercy, who fear their doubt or is unforgivable, and for all who are impediments to, to faith by their words or actions, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For the wisdom and insight of the Holy Spirit, for confessors, spiritual directors, and all ministers of reconciliation, to help others recognize God's abundant love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For protection of all life from beginning to end, for support and compassionate care for the suffering and the sick. Monique Picard Popak, Cameron Hall, Aaron Jolie, Frank Notarangelo, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. For all who have gone before us, believing in the resurrection, and for our beloved dead, Jose Alejandro Barrientos, Marion Burke, Neil Fikes, Father Bernard Paquette, we pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. Today, our celebration is in loving memory of Pierre de Repensigny, Carlos Dias, Margaret Moffat, and Lida Pat. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Father of mercy. Now let us also pray for our personal intentions. God of infinite mercy and love, we are grateful that you love us, not only in our strengths, but also in our weakest moments. Hear the prayers we place before you. Uphold us when we are doubtful. Strengthen our faith in your unending mercy. Free our hearts to accept your Son, however he comes to us. Give us the courage to share signs of his presence with others through Christ our Lord.
the similar way when Sapar was hundred, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his side to say, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of the <laughs> Let 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Lord, hold his face, I give you my face, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant them peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Let me pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a calming effect, a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our second collection today is an aid of our capital debt fund. Please be generous in your support. Will the people use the envelope number 276 and 394? Please contact the office. You are not afraid to take problems on our system. Our Bible study program continues this Thursday, April 11th at 7 p.m. in the Bible. You members are welcome, and the contact information is in the bulletin. Our morning second shut ins is next Saturday, April 13th. A detailed itinerary is in the bulletin as well as registration information. The deadline to register is this Wednesday. Our next high tea is Wednesday, April 17th at 2.30 p.m. You know the routine, call the ring or email her to register. And the deadline is this Friday, April 12th. Tickets for our Ministers of Hospitality spring raffle are on sale now at the rear of the church. Three dollars each or two for five dollars. Please put your ticket in the box for the prize you wish to win. Tickets for our Mother's Day brunch, taking place Sunday, May 12th at noon, are now on sale for twenty-five dollars each. You can pick them up at the rear of the church following the celebration or reserve them by calling Marlene at extension 227. There will be a walk in support of the Palace Care Center opening in LaSalle soon on Sunday, May 5th. And so far, Team Robot consists of our parish secretary, Wendy. You're welcome to join her, support the team, or hey, you can even do both. Information is in the holiday. And finally, we're invited to bring non perishable items for our food bank next week. And this week, we're asking for cereal. Sure. Two or three prices with there. Pick up the one on sale. Thank you, and God bless. Just once again, I remind you about the, about the second Shakti's gathering or celebration on this coming Saturday. Please bring your elderly parents who are sitting uh, sick. Uh, for a special blessing and for a special celebration. It will be a joy for them in their life. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have a happy and blessed. Weekend and a Sunday.